They have served and served well. They have helped shape character and personality, yet allowed creativity and individuality. They gave their lives to the education system. This is reminiscing, and this is their story. We forgot them somehow. Where are they now? We forgot them. We started school at age four. But being a, a, a brilliant student, I found myself moving up very quickly. Uh, for example, when I was about 10 years old, I was exposed to an exam called where I had to obtain the Javoui scholarship. I was successful, but my mother decided that she would not allow me to go and live in Castries. But this did not deter me. I continued on, and by age 12, I did a standard six exam. That was the exam available at the time. That was all, and succeeded. But whenever you have finished this exam, you have completed this exam, that would be end of the school for you. But de most definitely, they wanted you to remain. So the, there was what you call the monitor, being a monitor to prepare to, be a, to act as a teacher. So this I did, but it's just as if you had to operate, perform as a teacher, as if you were getting paid, which you did not mind at all, helping in the school. And also, you could do the exam, teacher's exam. And that is why when, I, when my appointment, when there was a vacancy, I was appointed in 1957, 1956, sorry, 1956, I was appointed, since I have done the free exams, I was appointed PT3, that was what it was called at the time, and then I carried on to, until I got a transfer from the Den Rinfant School where I all started this on this journey. Came up to La Ressource School and uh, I obtained what you call the CA Certificated Assistant. So you see it was progressive. I was encouraged to apply to enter the teacher's college which was at San Susi at, at that time. That was in 1964. I was so encouraged that even I was with child at the time, my third child, I had to go because I was always reminded that there is potential in me for handling a school so I, but then this was required these qualifications were required so i went into the college and i was successful called the, which towards a trained teacher so i continued on where i was appointed as the first principal of the Denny Rivier Combined School. We started the school with 65 students, which they took from the Larissa School, 65 students. And it grew rapidly. My first head teacher at the time, head teacher was Miss Eva Mongru. She was really instrumental in get, getting me through or at the beginning. And uh, 
and uh, we had people like Mr. Jones Mondesi and uh, we have um, Georgiana Sajusin is one of them. Um, Mrs. Theophilus and all of these and many more. Oh, I want to mention Mrs. Mrs. Miriam, I'll tell you, Gill, Mrs. Gill. Oh, I, I re really try to emulate her. My main challenges was with the performance of the Ministry of Education at that time. What was expected of us and what was forthcoming in terms of maintenance of the schools and other supplies. What I did not really like was on the spot check, they would, uh, they would be right there and they would be able to observe right there that the school, there was an overcrowd, for example, for example, there was an overcrowding problem. And it's just as if they ignore it. That wasn't there at all. And uh, anyone would tell you that I had to be like a pioneer, just pressing on to get more space for the children. This school had a very large population, almost 800 students. It was an infant school at the time. However, with such a large number of students and a large staff, she had full control over the school. I explained to the parents, I put it to the parents to let them know what our problems were like. And uh, that is in terms of the ministry. And in terms of the whole pattern of the economic structure, um, I found that we the principals, or for me, I had to be concerned about the children's health. All of that was left to us. When we examined the whole thing, children were not able to come to school because they would explain that they, they had no food, they had no, had no meals or whatever, and we had to chip in there. I knew her in my prior teaching years. And now that I'm a teacher for 23 years, I can take back a lot from her. Patience for the children that we have before us, um, kindness to those around us, and this need to understand the person that you work with. There are times I, as a principal, would have to go when I realize, when I check the attendance, because that we had no help of attendance officers at that time so we had to do it all and when I check the registers or discuss with the teachers we realize that there are children who would stay home sometimes I would have to visit the homes and maybe have extra uniforms in my position and bathe up these children in the river yeah, and give the parents an allowance just to take the children to school. And they don't forget, they keep thanking me up to now. So that in itself was a challenge and that is how we had to cope with it. There was no such thing as school feeding program so you had to find a way from your pocket to feed those children. I used to go to the Rivia Combay School, whereas my family couldn't supply to give me lunch, breakfast, and break. Miss Nicholas took it as a responsibility to make sure that she given me the break, the lunch, and sometimes breakfast. 
It came to a point when she even took me in to live with her until I left the school. Once more, I would like to thank Mrs. Nicholas for taking good care of me at the school. Thank you. My family was, was larger, six boys. Yeah, you had, I would do it. For, there are times on mornings, early in the mornings, I would drive down to, to one thing I made sure I could drive. That helped me a lot. I had a vehicle. During that time, the government would give you advances to buy your vehicle. That helped a lot. And I would rush the, the boys, those who went to St. Mary's College. They all went to St. Mary's College. I rushed them down those who went there at the time. Very early in the morning, reach Rigi and back to school for nine o'clock. I would do it. And the, the rest were with me at my school. Well, I had to manage because my boys never took any extra lessons from anybody else but me. As a matter of fact, she was a no-nonsense principal. Um, you have to be, I don't know, compassionate yet a tough cookie. And dedicated. That is why now I, I have this chronic disease, kidney failure, you know that? And I don't regret. And by not regretting, I think it carries me on. Because I knew the challenges which I had faced before and uh, not paying attention to my high blood pressure because my first option was the school and that's a fact. But I'm happy today. I had to manage. When you, it's like you got to do what you got to do. As a past student of the Denny River Combined School, before known as the Denny River Primary, under the leadership of Mrs. Francilia Jackson, at the time known as Miss Nano, I recognized that as a student, we were afforded free lesson session. Why? Because Miss Nano, known to us, did not only care about our, our well-being as students in terms of finance, but she saw it as we being totally developed and saw the need for lessons to helping, to aiding the children of the society. So she gave us lessons free of charge. And mind you, I, anyone can attest to that, that I would give, find time to give children extra lessons. The children at the school, not all of them, those who are preparing for exams. And when I say extra lessons, it's not about, it was not about money. If once I see charities, help is needed, I do it. There is hardly a, anyone's journey which will be complete. It can never be completed. Because when I watch the way I, the children at my school behave while they were at the school. Over the student, she was what you would call a disciplinarian. I tried my best because you could see it. You could notice that they are lacking this kind of um, discipline and you try your best to do it to help them with good discipline. But these are the very, these are the very, I wouldn't say boys, young men who are challenges, who are challenges. So uh, to me, I was wondering if there wasn't something, some, some more I could have done. But as, a, as I act now as a JP, Justice of the Peace, when they come to me for assistance, I believe there was something else. There was something more which I could have done. For example, 
for example, but it wasn't completely my fault because I always believe at the school we could have faced the realities of life. For example, helping children to fill out forms and this, you know, all of this. But the emphasis was very much on the syllabi. You have to follow the syllabi. She would go from class to class. It's like jumping from class to class. It's like even if the scheme and record book was there, but she would see to it that she herself would be there to see what you were actually teaching. But if I had my way again, in fact, I really wanted to start, well, it's not for my condition. I really wanted to start a program of just calling them in and doing certain certain things that would help them through in life. Um, number one is filling out a form and giving them an insight into investment. What investment is all about. Because I believe our young people today, when you listen to them, they seem to just look at somebody and evaluate them as rich but they do not understand about the how the intricacies of investment leading the person towards that goal. That's one I think they should really touch at the school. I saw the differences coming. One, when they came up with the rights of the child the rights of the child. They came out with this document and it's the introduction of the document that in itself was could have been misunderstood. All right, I can understand we have to, the corporal punishment thing, aspect of it, that's out. It's a good thing and we need it to be guided accordingly but when you listen to the children now as compared to before the children before were more dependent on on how well we the educators could, could carry them through but the children now are very much on their own you see them coming on the television talking about their rights. How many do you hear talking about responsibilities? How many to say that I so and so, I am responsible for my behavior? How many times do you hear that? But before, in our profession, before, we, we had the leverage to nurture more parent support. And this, I think the parents would understand much more than now. Because at my school, parent support was 100%. When I say support, it may not be financial, but getting involved in different projects. Like you would, everything now is just as if people want to say, oh, the government will provide that to the, to the children. Okay? All of it, oh, the government should provide, but we, there was no such thing. For example, in the development of a school library at my school, at my school, I did not depend on the government or the ministry or other agencies. One of the first things I did, I did a survey of, of households because I knew too well there may be one parent with more than one child at my school. And we went out to teach the staff, I must say the staff and myself. We took time to go to the, to the city, go to the bookstores and see what books were available, right? Science books and others. 
looking back, write down the titles. And then for each household, we provide the household with a title, book title, and also tell them, told them of the cost and where it was available. And you wouldn't imagine that came down very well. That's just one example. And other activities, getting involved in activities, always good. And the children's behavior, you know, much better before. I'll tell you, tell, tell you what way I really saw it coming. We would take the children on outings. And the last time I really took them out was at Fondo. I usually go with the teachers all day. And it was becoming difficult to manage the children. Imagine for all these years, you have to be ready to go to school by 8, 8.30. I mean, it's just meshed in you. So you wake up in the morning on the first day and you, you're getting ready as well. Then you realize that is not so. That is not so. Then progressively you get, sorry, progressively you get into the habit of staying at home. But what you really do, you get, you remain active. For example, gardening. I love gardening. And the, in the community here where I, I, I live, the children would continue coming to me. So I would encourage them after school. I would still give them little extras. But gradually, that's how it left me. And more so, I was not feeling well. Because it's from that time, I was coming down with this kidney failure. So to me, it was rather convenient. Because sometimes when I walk past a school, maybe at break time or midday, I'll begin to look at myself. How did I manage this? Watching the children and how, you know, and how I, I, I realize, not realize, but to me, there was where I was accountable for every child at the school. How did this happen? How did I manage? You know, I'd ask myself. And I'd rather not, I'd rather not go near a school. Oh, I stayed 25 years, oh no, 30 years as a principal. What happened, I acted about five years at the Larissus Primary School. And when we talk of primary school, like at my school, that's from infant right up to standard six you know at my school at Dane area when i left there there was an enrollment of 606 children and you have to manage that my proudest moment was when the results exams and um, common entrance exam and to see that Maybe that year, oh, my school did very well. That is my promise. That's one achievement. That's what was achieved. And uh, also, when <laughs> I was having fun with my students, <laughs> that meant a lot to me. But the proudest moment was. Uh, mm, what would I have done differently? Looking back. Oh, I would try my best to encourage. I would try my best. I would continue. I would continue along those lines. Having the ministry to realize that not all children are academically 
um, sorted and for them to look towards to vocational and te technical much more of that because what's the use of you having these children already some children would look at you and tell you they can't stand that they can't manage it and you could see they can manage it no matter how you try i mean the academics and then you still try to push them into the secondary school to continue yes they must have the academics but then it must be matched up with their potential towards the skill yes towards the skill and that would go well for our country that, that is what I would do continue to encourage the ministry help the children to know God to think of God putting God in their lives and uh, be a bit more respectful these children pass on, I mean, when you listen to their conversation, it doesn't go well for the country. Yes, that is, that's what I see. And something else before I leave. When I grew up, our teachers, not the parents, because my parents couldn't speak a word of English but our teachers were concerned about our level of English, especially in speaking oral English, they were concerned. Now the children say anything, not all the children, but most times, things like I, words like I does. You see that I does thing, it bothers me and much more and when sometimes you try to talk with them even right here on the compound i would talk to the little fellas when they use these ideas and it's like so what we can do better better can be done because you are what you are by the way you speak you present yourself because everywhere I go when you speak overseas and so on the the first thing they want to know where you're from and what's your prof what has been your profession or they ask you and the way you write the presentation yeah For God first let them know about God let them have let them get involved in discussions pertaining to the reality of life. Let them have this discussion and of course deal with the anger management aspect of it. I feel honored that I, I, had, I, got, I got the opportunity to have had her as a principal. Thank you very much. She was one of those right now that I can thank for where I am today. Once again, let me say she was one of the greatest principals we ever had. I would say, Miss Nano, thank you very much. You've taken me a long way in life.